So this last lesson in functions is about uh, modeling with sequences. And, and remember we said that modeling is just uh, the same thing as uh, uh, taking any kind of a real life, real world situation and taking that real world situation and uh, converting it to mathematical language. You know, algebra is a mathematical language. We use that to speak math. And so we model something, we speak it in math, we also use it to solve. So here's the first problem. This is example one. I mentioned it a moment ago about your notes. And you know, you don't have to write all the words, but you probably need to write down uh, some of the important parts. And one of the important parts that I would label right away is that this is example one. And you can refer back to it in your notes. You can also refer back to it to it in your Google Classwork where the notes have been posted. So it says we're going to model real world situations and solve problems using arithmetic sequences. For example, okay, here we go. Suppose watermelons cost $6.50 each at the local market. And then the total cost in dollars of N watermelons can be found by CN equals 6.5. N. C of N equals 6.5 N. So the first thing I'd write down is, is I would actually write down the function itself. Okay, C of N equals 6.5 N. Now that is worthy of being written down. Okay, okay you can refer back to your classwork notes there to get the whole word problem, but that's the function. And it says complete a table. You know, in our text, lots of times you'll see a table done left or right, but it doesn't have to be done that way. And personally, I prefer like a T chart, okay? Because I know that I need to find n values. And it says complete the table for values one, two, three, and four. Well, that's my, my input values. That is my independent variables. That means I bought one watermelon, I bought two watermelons. About three watermelons will be a song. About four watermelons, here we go. So I'm creating a table that I can put in each watermelon, and then I'm going to evaluate using this function C of N, okay? Now the function's pretty simple. I know for each time that I input something, I'm gonna take that input and multiply times 6.5. Okay, so 1 times 6.5 is 6.5, right? And then 2 times 6.5 is 13. 3 times 6.5 is 19.5. And then 4 times 6.5 is 26. And you know, that's just multiplication. If you need to use your graphic calculator that's, that's all located on your uh, computer, do that. You know, if you want to use a calculator you know, on your cell phone to multiply that, or you can just multiply it without a calculator like I do. That's pretty much up to you. I'm not good at multiplying. Question? I'm not good at multiplying. Well, and, and I, I, I cheated. Honestly. What I did is I knew 1, 6, uh, 1 times 6.5 is 6.5, right? And I know 2 times that is... 6.5 twice is 6.5 plus 6.5. So what I did, I just added those in my head. I know 6 6 is 12, 0 .5, 0 .5 is one more, so it'd be 13. And I knew if two of them were 13, four of them were 26. And then I added 6.5 to, to 13, I got 19.5. That was what was going on in my head. I really wasn't sitting here going, or standing here going two times 6.5, or three times 6.5. I was just being kind of logical about it. So, does that make sense? Yeah, so, so again, there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? Because all that uh, multiplication is, is repeated addition. I mean, that's what it is. If I say 3 times 6.5, that means I took 6.5 and added it 3 So times. what's the common denominator? I'm not denominator. What's five. my common difference? Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's 6.5. Uh, Right, because it's increasing by 6.5 every time. Good question. Okay, let's go to the B part. Okay, so you asked, she just answered that question. She said, what is the common difference? Well, 
We looked at this chart and it was increasing by 6.5. So the common difference is 6.5. What does the N represent in this context, okay? When I was inputting those numbers, and that, this, this question is going to go to you, so I need somebody to answer. I may call on somebody online, or I may call on somebody here. Anybody's fair game. What does N represent in the context of this problem? Remember what we're talking against me? How many watermelons? How many watermelons? Yeah, absolutely. How many watermelons? And, and then what is, or what are, let me get my grammar correct, what are the dependent and independent variables in, in this context, okay? So what is the independent variable? The total cost. Say again? The independent variable? Think that again. Now, you know, here's the deal. I don't, I don't really even have to think about that if I look at my table. Okay, my independent variable is my input. Independent input. Ah, got it. So my independent variable, if I'm looking at the table, is my input. What's my inputs? Mm -hmm. How many? Okay. And if I think about that in terms of dependent and independent variables, the independent variable has to be the number of watermelons because the cost depends on how much I buy. All right, so uh, and those those are easy to mix up. So my independent variable is n or the number of watermelons. I should have picked a fruit that wasn't so long. Right, watermelons. You know, why not just say like a half? And, and, and then the dependent variable, you know, the dependent variable will always be the function C of N or, or Y, and that's just the cost. Jot that down, okay? Again, that's pretty important for you to be sure that you get. Question? All right. Let's look at another example. Let's move on to example two. I'll give you just a second to jot down what you need to write down, and we'll move on. as you finish with your notes there, just put your pencil down, that way I know that I can move on. So in the same example, we'll get to E part. It says find C of 7, okay? So if I do that, C of 7 then is 6.5 times 7. So what is C of 7? Um, let's see. So 5 times 35, put a decimal, carry 3, 6 times 7, 42, 45. Five. So I, I did multiply that one, Shayla, the old fashioned way. I, seven times five is 35, carry the three, seven times six is 42, plus three, 45. One decimal place. There it is. Okay, so it's 45.5. Okay, so C of seven is equal to 45.5, but what does that value represent? The total of the what? Like railroads. Yes. Uh, the total of cost for seven watermelons. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, the total cost, which was forty five dollars and fifty cents for seven watermelons. Okay, so 
Check it out. When I look at that function, I see that, okay? I see that, that my, my input value was seven. That's the number of water lines. And, and then when I evaluated this function, the C of seven, I found out that it was at 45.5 or 45 hours and five, 50 cents. So that's what that function tells me. Now, what, uh, what domain values make sense for that? In other words, what input values could I have for, for this particular function when we're talking about watermelon? So, so what are logical, sensible uh, domain input values? Okay, I mean, well, let, let's 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 turn that around. Let's talk about non-logical input values. Um, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I could buy thirty-seven water uh, and Okay, what could I not buy? In watermelon. What? Yeah, I can't buy a negative watermelon. What is that anyway? You know, that's like a, a kiwi fruit or something. Else. I can't. I can't buy a negative watermelons, right? So my input or my domain can't be negative. I, I guess I could buy zero watermelons, right? No. Yeah, I could buy nothing, and no. it doesn't cost me anything. So, yeah. You said buy, so I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you, you you make a point, okay? You know, you might not buy zero, okay? So so we could probably include zero, probably throw zero out. We'd we'll probably go either way. Let me ask this: Will they allow me to buy half a watermelon? Just Probably not, no. especially not with COVID nineteen. Come in and cut this watermelon in half, carry it to the store, and let everybody call for it. No, I ain't gonna have it. All right. So, so my domain has to be okay. N is greater than, and we could say or equal to. You can make a case either way, but N has to be greater than zero, and it has to be. Uh, positive. And so how do, how do I say no decimals, no fractions? Positive what? Zero. What I call this? Um, um, whole. Well, whole, that would be positive whole numbers. I could say whole numbers. I could say counting numbers, of course. Yeah, and if, if, if I say if I say positive, see, there, there really aren't uh, positive. I mean, whole numbers are just naturally positive, okay? So I probably don't need that word if I said whole numbers, but but if I say positive, and, and I would say positive, I need to say, well, positive integers. In other words, no fractional parts. Okay, so, so that's the way I would describe that domain. I could write it in set builder notation. We've not spent, you know, like a lot of times set builder notation for, for the test and all I'll just accept that it's greater than or equal to zero. And you know, the other thing you could do is you could put it like uh, in interval notation, you could say zero and positive infinity like that, meaning everything positive, but you still have to say, and we're just talking about the positive integers, no decimal, because if I don't say that, I'm implying that I can have a fraction or a decimal. So example number two. Okay, so this one's a little different. I, I already have the tape, and uh, again, like I told you, you've got this in your notes, so you won't write down example two, but my, my, my job here is to construct an explicit rule in function notation for an arithmetic sequence represented by this table. So this table shows the distance in miles from the store that uh, Myla has traveled after n hours. So if she travels for one hour, she's gone 20 miles. Holy smoke, she's not driving very fast, is she? If she travels for two hours, she's gone 32 miles, three hours, 44 miles, four hours, 56 miles. Now, what we want to do is we want to determine f of 10, and we want to write an explicit formula. Now, there's two things you have to have to write an explicit formula. What's the first thing you have to have? Do you remember? You need to know what the starting 
Value, what, f of? X. One, it's, we, we are, we are, they gave us, we don't have a function yet, but we're going to write a function, right? Okay, so we, we, we want to write a function, and we're going to use the explicit formula. So you got to remember what that is, and that's in your notes from before. So there are two things we have to write, have to write an explicit formula. We said this last week, we have to have f of 1. we got to know what it is. That's what I was trying to get you to say. And we also have to know something else. What, what's the other thing we have to know? The common what? The common what? Oh, come on. The common? <laughs> so, you said a minute ago. You asked me. The common? Difference. Difference, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I'm going to create an explicit formula, I have to have those two things, the, the common difference and f of 1. So what is f of 1 here? <laughs> it's what? 20, yes. <clears throat> so what's my common difference? Oh. Yes, thank you. Hold your honest book and it's there. B is equal to 12. Okay, so in other words, from 20 to 32, it increased by 12. And then from 32 to 44, it increased by 12. And from 44 to 56, it increased by 12. All right, so F of 1 then... I should put this here. I got kind of excited because she had that right. F of 1 then is, is 20. So to write an explicit formula, do you remember the deal? It's F of N equals the first term, which is 20, plus, okay, the common difference, which is 12, times N minus 1. That's the formula. You've got that formula. You can give it to you on the test. It's in your notes. You can look at your notes for that. That's the common formula for, for the, the general formula for the explicit uh, uh, formula. All right, so that's the explicit formula. That's all I have to do. We did a bunch of that last week. So the, the actual problem is once you've got your explicit formula, we've got our explicit formula, then we want to find F of 10. All right, so it's going to be 20 plus 12 times 10 minus 1. Okay? All I did was plug that 10 into this function. So 10 minus 1 is 9. Remember, i got to do my parentheses first always. That's order of operations. And so it's 12 times 9. And then it's going to be 12 times 9. Anybody know what your 9 stays? What is 12 times 9? What? 108. So what you said? Yes. Good for you. Of course, again, I cheat on that. I go 9 times 11. That's 99. Plus 9. Ah, 108. So 20 plus 108 is 128. So this function f of 10 is 128. Have I answered the question? Uh, and they said, well, I'm not having hardly. It says, this is the distance in miles that she travels after n hours. So determine f of 10 and tell what it represents. So here's what it represents. What, what does that represent? When I say f of 10 equals 128, I'm saying that Mila has traveled how many hours? She's traveled 108 hours. Y'all didn't think that one through. How long did she travel? Uh, um, she traveled. What? Hour, hour, a minute. Okay, let me let me say this again. Oh, oh, 10. Yeah, there you go. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. So she's traveled. Somebody said 100 or 120. I thought that's a long time to travel. She's traveled 10 hours. And how far has she gone? Yeah, she says, there you go. See how you did it? She's gone 128 miles. Bingo. So would it be like... 
Is there a question there? I'm trying to think. Okay, because uh, I know it hurts. Would it be like? Um, but how did you get to 128 miles when it goes from like up on a chart? Okay, so I, I wrote the explicit formula, right? Okay, and, and, and that's explicit formula. Each one of those values will work because I, I wrote the explicit, you know, rule. Okay. Why is that such a high number and those are smaller? Because she's traveled 10 hours. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, in five hours, the next one up, she will oh, have no, traveled no, no, no. Okay, I understand. 12 I more. So, yeah, so that's yeah. really twice that, you know, so. Right. So that's a good question. You're thinking, I like that. Let's look at another example real quick. Same deal. All right. Uh, we've got a chart. We want to determine F of 18, tell what it represents. Okay, so this table shows the dust, the, the total cost in dollars of purchasing in battery packs. All right, so what's the two things we need? We need F of what? We need F of 1. What is our first term? And we need to know the common difference. Okay, so what is F of 1? Come on. 4.90. Yes, 4.90. And then what's my common difference? Um, 4.90. No, it goes from 4.9 to 8.9, then to 12.9, oh. 16.9. What's my common difference? It's increasing by what? Four, yeah. So all I have to do to write the explicit formula then is say, well, okay, F of N. Is equal to 4.9. I'm going to drop that zero off. I don't really have to have that. Uh, it's there because of the dollars and cents. Plus 4 times n minus 1. Okay. Remember the, the, the explicit formula is just the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. All right. So it's 4.9. And well, I don't even have to rewrite that. What I want to find out then. And the problem says, tell me, tell us what the value of f of 18 is, okay? So f of 18 will be equal to 4.9 plus 4 times 18 minus 1. All right, so here we go. 18 minus 1, 17. What is 4 times 17? What? Oh, it's time. Yes, time. So it's 4 times 7 is 28, right? Carry 2, 4 times 7 is 4, plus 2, 68. Okay, plus 4.9. Okay, so 4.9 plus 68 would be 72.9. Try sure I did the right math here. Yep, that's right. So it asked me, well, what does that mean in context, okay? Let me go back and read the problem, okay? The problem tells the, 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 the total cost in dollars in purchasing in battery packs, okay? So all I'm saying there in context is 18 battery packs Cost seventy-two dollars and ninety cents. That's all I'm saying. So that's what you're asked to do. Not not that tough to do. Gotta remember a couple things. You gotta remember you need your first term, you need your common difference to write the explicit formula. So you gotta find those in the table. That's not hard. And then you need to uh, solve it for whatever's asking. Got uh, two more examples I will look at, and then I'll let you get started on your assignment for today. Give me a sec. Oh, here we go. So um, let's construct an explicit rule in function notation. For this arithmetic sequence. Now, this time it's been shown to me in a graph. You know, we can do functions in lots of different ways. We can do it with words, we can, 
We can show you a function in a table. You know, we can show you a function as a graph. You know, we can show it as a mapping even. So, so we've got it as a graph, and it says this graph shows the height and inches of a stack of boxes on a table as the number of boxes in the stack increases. Find the height of the stack with seven boxes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. And as you remember, I like T-chart a little better. So it's N and F of N. All right. So if I, if I chart that out, it's 134. It's 251. Y'all need to write this down. It's 368. And then the last one is 485. Yes, ma'am. Okay, no problem. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate it. Okay, so I've got my chart, right? I've created a table. And then I need to next find the common difference. So, you know, what's the common difference between 34 and 51? 17? Sounds right to me. I didn't subtract it. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. No. All right. So the common difference then is 17. So this, I just write the rule. Here's the rule. Let's rule rules. <laughs> F of N. So my first term, 34. Plus 17 times N minus 1. Bingo. Now, I've got it written. It asks for... Uh, the height of seven boxes. Okay? So, what is F of seven? What's well, 34 plus 17 times seven minus one? I got to multiply set or subtract seven minus one first, which is six. Multiply that times 17. You, know, you could actually just put that in your graphic calculator with the parentheses on the right place. It'll tell you that answer if that helps you. So, seven minus one, six. So 34 plus 17 times 6. Okay, so 6 times 17. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 plus 4 is 102. Somebody check me on that. Is that right? Is 17 times 6 102? No. Okay. So now it's 34 plus 102, which would be 130. Six. So f of seven is 136. So okay, so seven boxes, I believe it is. Uh, yep, seven boxes would be 136 inches tall. And, and you know what? That fits on my graph. I can see that. You know, seven boxes. Here's my number of boxes. Here's my height in inches. So yeah, that looks like that would fit on that graph. And it'll be a straight line because that's a linear. Think. Give me this chance to finish writing that down. Let's look at this next question. So, in, in, how do you know that which variable is an independent variable and which variable is a dependent variable in a real life world situation involving an arithmetic sequence? Remember that an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in order and the number is the position number. An arithmetic sequence will always start with a one. That's what we said. First term is one, second term is two, third term is three, right? And, and it increases by the same amount or it decreases by the same amount. So always the independent variable is that position number. If we're talking about um, watermelons, you know, you know, it's one watermelon or five watermelons. If you're talking about boxes, it's one box or five boxes. So in an arithmetic sequence, the independent variable is that position number. You know, we all well, I can't spell position. We already know we already know that it's the x value, it's the domain. We know it's the input, okay? And then my dependent variable is what that position number, the value that it indicates. All right, look at this one right quick while I answer my phone. 
And um, see if you can come up with a, a value. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think I'm in my room, but you know I'm getting kind of old. I could have gone in the wrong room. Who knows? <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thanks. Sir. All right, Jim charges each member $100 for the first month. Okay. And, and then that includes a $50 membership fee. And, and then it's $50 per month after that. So how much money will a person spend on their on their gym gym or mill membership in the gym? Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table. Yes, ma'am. I was going to tell you. Oh, okay. Do you have the answer? Yeah. How, what is it? Well, I don't know if it's right. Okay. Well, okay. Let's, let's walk through. Okay. So I know we're going to do an explicit formula. Okay. I would do a table. I'd do an X and F of X. Okay. I know the first month is how much? 100. Yep. 100. And I know the next, yeah, right? 150 is for 200. two. Okay. Now, my, my problem does say. Don't just keep going up by 50, it's just six. It wants me to write a form. Okay. So, so because it says. Wait, wouldn't the first one be 150? Well, it doesn't say write a formula, but do whatever. Wouldn't the first one be 150? Well, the first. Including the, the first month is $100, and that $50 is already included in. Oh, okay. And then the second month is 150 Third month, yeah, you could be, you could be, in theory, you could take that table all the way down to six, yeah, six and be done see. with, right? You got three. And that's okay. If you're on an EOC and test and that's what you figured out and it works, you get the right answer. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you know, but but I could also write this as a, a, a an explicit formula too. Do you have a question on that? Yeah. Why do you think the first one would be? I can hear you. It are the fifty right, the first one would be fifty. Fifty dollars to be learning. Yeah. Right here. It says which includes the membership fee. All right, so then they, you know, it's like a lot of businesses do. They go ahead and, you know, do all that up for you. And, and it really makes my my function a little easier to write in that I know that my first term is 100, and I know my common difference is 50 because it's going up 50 each month. And if I want to write that explicit formula, it's just 100 uh, plus 50 times uh, n minus 1. And then it says how much on the sixth one, so I can plug that in there too. And, and, and this one's really cool because the, the numbers are so easy. Six minus one, which is five. Five times 50 is 250. And 250 plus 100 would be 350. Is that what you got, Shayla? 350. Yeah. So, so there you go. That works. I think the other way so much easier. It is. It is. You know, but if they ask you what's it going to be like after. You know, 50 months, you might not want to do it that way. You might rather use the function, you know. Uh, but yeah, the table's easier in this case because we just went up to six. So anyway, that, that helps us with what we need to know. And, and what we need to do is take our, our functions and model them. And, and then model an arithmetic sequence as a function. And in fact, we're going to take the word problems we give, model them, and, and use them to write that explicit uh formula to find the answer. That's the goal of what we're working on today. And so I'm going to give you an assignment here in just a moment. But, but right now you're able now to take that arithmetic sequence and model it using the things that you know. The first term, the common difference, and the formula.